Hello and welcome to episode 62 of the Anger Secrets podcast. I'm your host, Alistair Dews, and over the last 30 years, I have taught over 15,000 men and women how to control their anger, master their emotions, and create calmer, happier, and more loving relationships. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. Every day, I talk to people who struggle with anger. And as you probably know by now, it is my mission to help as many people as possible control their anger, master their emotions, and create calmer, happier, and more loving relationships. So, thank you for being here, and let's get started. Today, I'm going to talk about a question that I get asked all the time. This question is, why do I get angry so fast? This is a great question, and one that many people struggle with. I know how frustrating it can be to feel like you have no control over your anger, especially when it seems to come on so quickly, and sometimes over the smallest things. But the good news is, there are reasons why many people think that they get angry quickly. Even better, once you understand these reasons, you can learn how to recognize when you are getting angry and take steps to de-escalate your anger before it gets out of control. So, let's dive in and explore three reasons why you think you get angry fast, and what you can do about it. Reason number one is you are unaware of the build-up of anger. The first reason many people think they get angry fast is that they are not aware of the build-up of anger within them. For example, you may be going about your day, thinking that you are feeling fine, and then suddenly someone says or does something that triggers an outburst of anger. You may feel like your anger came out of nowhere, but the truth is, usually there is a build-up of frustration or anger leading up to this moment. This build-up is why it is important to recognize the signs of your anger building up within you before your anger gets out of control. For example, one of the first tools I teach in my online anger management coaching program is what I call the tension scale. So, what is the tension scale? The tension scale is a scale from 0 to 10 that measures your level of tension or stress in any situation. 0 on the tension scale represents no tension or stress whatsoever while 10 represents extreme tension or stress. As you will probably understand, most people's tension or stress levels go up and down all day, depending on what is happening. If you are having a busy day at work, for example, your tension levels will rise. However, once the workday finishes and you get home, your tension levels will often fall. Many people who say to me that they get angry very quickly are simply not aware of their levels of tension or stress before an outburst of anger happens. They feel like they are fine one minute and then get extremely angry the next. But when I break down with them what happened leading up to that incident, they can clearly see that their tension levels were high prior to the incident occurring. So, what can you do about this? As I mentioned, One of the best things you can do is learn how to recognize the signs of anger building within you. There are many ways you can do that, all of which I teach in my online coaching programs. But perhaps the simplest is to become more aware of your levels of tension or stress throughout the day. By doing this, you can reduce your tension levels before an outburst of anger happens. Again, I will teach you how to do this in my online anger management coaching program the complete anger management system. Reason two, you have learned to react with anger. The second reason you may think you get angry fast is that you have learned to use anger as a habitual response to certain situations or triggers. This often happens if you grew up in a home where you witnessed anger being used as a way to control others or to get what you want. As children, for example, We learn how to react to others by watching our parents, older siblings, or caregivers, or other people in our lives. We learn what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior 
from them. So if you grew up in a home where you habitually saw anger outbursts, it's likely that you have learned to react with anger as well. The good news is, just like you can unlearn bad habits like smoking or overeating, you can also unlearn reacting with anger. This can take time, but it is possible. For example, one simple way to start unlearning a habit of responding quickly with anger is to identify the thoughts and beliefs you have about certain situations that trigger your anger. Once you have identified these unhelpful thoughts and beliefs, the next step is to replace them with more helpful ones. For example, if you find yourself getting angry every time someone disagrees with you, instead of thinking, they are attacking me, you can reframe your thoughts to something like, they have a different opinion and that's okay. Or, they may have a point that I haven't considered. Like any other skill, however, changing your thoughts and beliefs take practice, persistence, and patience, especially if you have been reacting with anger for a long time. But it is possible, and with time and effort, you will respond to all situations in a more calm and rational manner. Again, changing your thoughts and beliefs is something that I teach in the Complete Anger Management System, where, amongst other things, I share a number of tools to help you change the most common thoughts and beliefs that lead to anger. Reason number three, you underestimate the speed of your brain. The third reason you may think you get angry so fast is that you underestimate how fast your brain can process information. To explain this more, when people say that they get angry fast, I often ask them to describe a recent situation where anger took over and they reacted in a way that they later regretted. In response to this question, most people describe a time when they were in an argument with someone, such as their partner, and their anger quickly escalated to the point where they were shouting or being verbally abusive. When we break down the situation, however, it becomes clear that rather than going from 0 to 10 with nothing in between, the incident usually lasted for several minutes, or perhaps longer, before the outburst of anger happened. During these several minutes, the person was continuously interpreting, judging, and perceiving the situation in a way that led to their anger. The technical term for this is called cognitive appraisal, and it is something we all do. Now, does an incident that lasts several minutes constitute a person getting angry very quickly? To answer this, I often talk about the sport of tennis. As you may know, in a professional tennis match, the person serving the tennis ball often serves it at approximately 130 miles an hour, or perhaps even faster. This gives the person receiving the serve slightly less than one second to see where the server has served the ball, decide what shot to play, and play their shot. And if the person returning the serve is a good tennis player, they can do all of this in the less than one second they have to return the serve. Now, what does this have to do with anger management? The answer is that all of our brains can process information very quickly. For example, if I gave a person receiving a serve in tennis several minutes to return the serve, tennis would become a remarkably easy game. The person returning the serve may even decide to sit down on the court for the first minute, maybe stretch for a minute or two, and then stand up and return the serve. The same concept applies to any situation. If you are arguing with your spouse, for example, and the argument takes several minutes to really escalate, this gives you a lot of time to de-escalate the situation. In those several minutes, for example, you could take some deep breaths, remind yourself that this is not a fight to win or lose, but rather an opportunity to understand each other better, or even use humour to de-escalate the situation. Putting this another way, your brain processes information very quickly. If you have more than a second or two to respond to a situation, or if a situation lasts more than a second or two, then with practice, you can use the speed of your brain to your advantage to make different choices that would help you stay calm and in control. So, next time you think that you get angry very quickly, 
take a step back and remember the true speed of your brain. You have the ability to control how you respond to any situation, and with time and practice, you can learn to respond in a positive and calm manner. Okay, I hope this episode has been useful. Remember, the three main reasons you think you get angry fast are that you are not aware of the build-up of your anger, you have learned to react with anger, or you underestimate the power of your own brain. All of these reasons can be addressed through increased self-awareness, changing your thoughts and beliefs, and understanding the real processing speed of your brain. If you would like to learn more about how to control your anger and create calmer, happier, and more loving relationships, be sure to visit my website, angersecrets.com, and check out the complete anger management system. Okay, thanks for listening to today's episode on why do I get angry so fast, and be sure to tune in to next week's episode where I share three tips to build a better relationship. If you found this episode helpful, please follow this podcast or head over to your favorite podcast app and leave a rating and review. This will help other people struggling with anger to find and benefit from the show. Also, for anger help right now, visit my website, angersecrets.com. And finally, remember, you can't control other people, but you can control yourself. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. The Anger Secrets Podcast is for general informational purposes only, and does not constitute the practice of counseling, psychotherapy, or any other professional health service. No therapeutic relationship is implied or created by this podcast. If you have mental health concerns of any type, please seek out the help of a local mental health professional.